For all of my youth, as well as most of my adult life, the very idea of reaching for a handsaw when I needed to cut a board was absolutely absurd. Why would anybody reach for an old, slow, archaic tool like that when there are so many other powered, faster options? Uh, one day I bought a $4 piece of history at a secondhand store and I was immediately intrigued. I knew it was old, I didn't realize how old until I did some research and learned that it was 100 years old. Well, my mind gets to wondering and I think about the fact that who knows what this saw has been involved in the construction of. Anything that was built between 1897 and now, this saw could have taken part in. So I was attached right off the bat, but I decided that I didn't have any need for saws hanging on my wall in a collection. The only way I was going to be able to use it was to have it sharpened. Um, though it had been well taken care of, it was very dull. I looked around and I was unable to find any place that would sharpen hand saws. So that's about the point I figured I need to learn how to sharpen my own saws. So I sharpened that saw and I used it and immediately my life was changed and I knew why for all of my life I had hated using a hand saw. I'd never used a sharp hand saw. I'm going to go ahead and show you just a basic sharpening uh, on a, a standard handsaw so that you can turn that old useless slow archaic disused tool back into a useful handsaw. I'm going to just for grins here I'm going to do a before and after cut with this saw to see if I can uh, kind of quantify for you what the what the difference is how big of a difference it makes having a sharp saw vice a not sharp saw and truthfully this one that we're going to be sharpening today is uh, is not in horrible condition but it is certainly it is not sharp so I'm gonna just arbitrarily I'm gonna make 10 strokes in this fresh 2x4 and uh, then we'll do 10 strokes with the same saw after the sharpening job These don't count. Okay, there's 10 strokes. I will mark that as being the before, and then we'll do 10 strokes afterward. The first thing that you're going to need for this process is a saw vise. What do you mean you don't have a saw vise? Okay. Okay, go ahead and stop the video right now. Go back to the Flying Squid homepage, watch the video called Saw Vice, and then, and then come back. I'll wait for you. Go ahead. Okay, so I'm just kidding. You don't absolutely have to have a saw vise to do this. A couple of boards smashed side by side will suffice to hold your saw in a vise. Well, since I do have a saw vise, I'm going to put it to use. I'm going to slide the saw in the middle of it. I'm going to bring it up where the teeth are just a little ways above the level of the vise here. Then I'm going to clamp it into my bench vise. And next I will put a couple of clamps on it so that the saw blade doesn't vibrate and chatter as I sharpen it. There. The next item on the list is something that uh, this is one of the rare times you'll actually hear me say you have to have this tool to do uh, a particular job. This is a three-sided saw file. This one that I have here is a Nicholson made in Mexico Nicholson file that I think I give six and a half or seven bucks for at the local hardware store. You can't do this job without this tool. Everything else you can make do uh, but you have to have this file. Eventually this file will wear out um, but it does pay to have a, a good one. It will cut a lot nicer and you'll do a lot better job of sharpening your saw. Before we get any further down the road here I want to give a slight disclaimer. Uh, I'm not a professional at doing this. I'm purely a dude who learned how to do some stuff, uh, thinks it's pretty cool, and, and I want to pass that knowledge on to some of you. 
Um, I have uh, learned everything that I know about sharpening hand saws by observing the master, Mr. Paul Sellers, uh, who has sharpened, I think, six or seven, maybe eight saws uh, in his day. Uh, if you want to really know how to do this in depth, you want to really learn about this kind of stuff, uh, click on over to Paul Sellers' website. I can't think of what it's called, but uh, type in Paul Sellers in either your Google search bar or your, uh, your YouTube and, uh, and you'll come up with plenty of stuff to watch. You probably won't leave your screen for uh, a couple of days if you're into this kind of stuff. So I want to talk conceptually a little bit about how we're going to sharpen this saw. This is going to be uh, a, general, a general purpose saw. We're not making the distinction between uh, being a crosscut saw or a rip saw. Uh, this is just going to be for use around the house. We're just imagining that we have one uh, hand saw and we want to we want to be able to use it so we're going to do what uh, Paul Sellers refers to as a progressive grind on these teeth so you'll notice that the first few teeth and on our actual uh, real life size saw we're going to do this for the first inch and a half these teeth are pretty well neutral the cutting face is no more aggressive one way than it is the, uh, the other way um, and the purpose of that is for when you're very first starting your starting your saw blade into a piece of wood uh, before you have established that uh, that groove for your saw blade to, to ride in, you need it to not hang up, you need it to not be biting very aggressively. Then once you get that groove started, once you can start putting some power into it, you'll notice how the teeth a little bit further back, the cutting face here, gets a little bit more steep, gets a little bit more aggressive until ultimately you get back here uh, into, the, into the meat of your blade and the cutting face is straight up and down. Um, as as you move from your from your steeper back to your steep blades uh, or steep cutting faces, that's where you're entering your power stroke, where you where you're not concerned about it getting hung up because you're already established uh, in the stroke, you're already established in the in the groove, um, and that back here is where you're going to make your money once you start uh, once you start cutting with this. Another aspect that I want to touch on real quickly is the set of the saw blade. Now the set being the fact that if you look down the look down the uh, length of a saw blade, every other tooth is bent outward, and what that does is that creates a bit wider kerf than what the saw blade uh, what the saw plate is. If the saw teeth were all straight up and down, if there was no set to it, then you wouldn't get very far before your saw blade would start binding up in the kerf just because it doesn't have wouldn't have clearance to to go through there. Um, most saws are going to have uh, some some set left in them and therefore in this this particular go around of this process we're not going to really dig into the saw setting um, but you do need to look at your saw before you go sharpening a saw uh, look at it and just verify that it's not completely flat if it is completely flat uh, then then you're going to need to find some equipment in order to have it set. That's something that we'll likely talk about in a later video, but uh, this one right here, we're just gonna concentrate on the basics of sharpening a saw blade, but I did wanna at least touch on the saw set. I'm gonna introduce the last tool that we're gonna use in this process here, and then we're gonna go ahead and get to, get to getting. So the last tool that you need, and this is another kinda, you kinda need this one, um, is a mill bastard file, single cut mill bastard file, single cut being that it's only cut in one direction, it's not crisscross cut, and bastard because it's somewhere in between a rasp and a super fine file. So what we need this mill bastard file for is we're going to run it down the teeth of our saw so that we don't have any teeth that are sticking up higher than any of the other ones. We don't have any proud teeth. In order to do this, what I have done is I took off the handle. I've tried to do this before, and the handle always runs into the runs into the saw, so this just makes it more convenient to do. So here we go. I'm gonna run it right down the whole length of our saw. And take a look. See if it's hitting all of the teeth. It is not. Hit it again. So what you should be looking for is a little shiny spot. 
on the top of each tooth. Not sure how well the camera's going to capture it here. But you may be able to see how we have a shiny spot on the top of all those teeth. Since this saw is 10 points per inch, and I want to do the first inch with the uh, neutral rake to the, to the teeth, for the first 10 gullets, I'm going to have my file where the top is flat so that there's not, uh, not more aggressive angle on one side or the other. So here we go. Okay, there's number 10, and then for the next 20, I'm going to increase the angle just a little bit, not quite perpendicular, but just a little bit so that we're moving closer to that perpendicular angle. So welcome back, we're about 10, maybe 15 minutes later here, and if it's 15, it's only because I had to stop a couple of times, my arm got tired. If you look down the length of the saw, after my arm's out of the way, you can see how it's all very shiny, right? Pretty good indicator that you've got all the teeth, you can stand back. And kind of look down it, just to make sure that you haven't missed any. Not that missing one tooth is going to be a showstopper, but if you're going to take the time to do this, you might as well do it right. Last one. Okay. There we go. Sharp. Now it's time to see if all this trouble was really worth it. Here's our slot, 10 strokes before sharpening. And 10 strokes after sharpening. And now, whenever I need to saw a board, rather than thrashing around finding a power saw and a, an extension cord and an outlet, I just mosey into the shop, grab my hand saw, sharp saw doesn't take long to do it all thanks for watching i'll see you on the next video